On to my number four spot in my ranking of all Ninja Turtle movies from worst to best of all time. This is TMNT from 2007. When I first came up with the ranking for these films, I put this one at number five and Turtles 3 at number four. But before doing these videos, I rewatched this movie and Turtles 3 and could not deny that. While I feel more attached and familiar with Turtles 3, it's undeniably a worse film than this one. I first saw this movie many years ago after its release, around maybe 2015 or so, and absolutely hated it after my first viewing of it. However, when rewatching it, it's a better movie than I gave it credit for, despite still not being great. It came out at a strange time. It was sort of right before the massive Turtle Mania nostalgia movement came into play, and didn't at all tie into the 2003 cartoon that was the most current parallel at the time. It's hard to say who this movie was intended for, honestly. It was clearly meant to appeal to 80s and early 90s kids who loved Turtles in its glory days, with relatable nods to the generation like the arcade cabinet and the turtle lair, and the wall of objects from the first three movies. The Turtles are even seen working jobs for the first time in this film, further making it feel like they grew with us. Most of us were just out of high school or college at the time and were working full-time jobs for the first time in our lives too. But despite these attempts to connect with our generation, it generally ignored the characters, themes, and world of any of the popular Ninja Turtle products from our youth. It was so distant from a typical TMNT-style storyline that it barely even felt like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So with all that in mind, it would seem it generally was not made to appeal to us. But despite having little resemblance to the franchise we all knew and loved, the movie still requires viewers to have previous knowledge and commitment to the franchise in order to care about or follow what is happening, which sort of destroys the possibility of it being made for kids to get into it and form a new audience. So ultimately, it feels sort of like the movie is made for no one. I think the movie suffers from three major problems. The first of those is there is too much going on, but almost none of it is given proper time to breathe. The movie starts off with multiple stories told to the audience through exposition. We get the backstory of the Turtles origin, their victory over Shredder, and the backstory of the army of soldiers turned to stone into 13 monsters all before we even hear a character speak. It's a very weak way to introduce your movie. The movie wants to establish the Turtles again, focus on a boiling rivalry between Raph and Leo, establish April and Casey again, introduce Karai, who oddly is treated as if we are already supposed to know her, and have her and the Foot Clan involved with the plot, have 13 cryptid mini-bosses running amok, and have the main plot of the time-traveling rock army. Almost none of the 13 monsters are actually fought. The rock characters and their immortal human brother who were misled into thinking is the main villain aren't given any time to have personalities or for us to care about them. Mike, Don, and Splinter are basically sidelined for occasional comedy and everything just happens lightning fast. Things also just happen out of plot convenience that make very little sense just so the plot can get moving as fast as possible. Like April just magically happens to be in the exact Central American village as Leo by coincidence. The second biggest problem, which I already touched upon at the start of the video, is a lack of Turtles content. I think it would have been pivotal to the movie's success to include some familiar imagery from the 87 era of Turtles for people around my age at the time. For instance, they have high-ranking military soldiers made out of rock, yet didn't make them the rock soldiers. Sure, it would have made it a drastically different story if said soldiers were, say, General Trag and Lieutenant Granitor, but it would have made it more Turtles-inspired. Make the main villain Krang, make the rock army the rock soldiers, and make the 13 monsters mutant creations of Krangs that got loose, or even monsters from Dimension X he needs to capture for whatever reason and they could have easily gotten way more fans watching. Instead, we got generic ancient human villains we have no connection to and a bunch of Ben 10 monsters. During this era of Turtles, though, there was an obvious push to distance the franchise from the 87 cartoon and vintage Playmates toy line. 
The 2003 show prided itself on being more faithful to the Mirage comics and to not include almost all of the characters in the iconography of the 87 era. I believe most of this was due to Peter Laird having more control of the franchise at the time, and he was not a huge fan of where the franchise went during the 87 cartoon, but I could be wrong about that. But at the time, it didn't surprise me that this movie abandoned most 87 aspects. I was just kind of used to the idea that that's how the franchise was going to be at that point. It seemed gone for good were Bebop, Rocksteady, Fly Baxter, and the Punk Frogs. I know Ninja Turtle products don't always have to follow my personal favorite era of Turtles to be good, but the timing of this movie just felt right for such an iteration. And there is no denying that the 87 era is the most popular and marketable era of Turtles. It's the era that made the franchise a juggernaut and allowed all these movies and later cartoon series to get made in the first place. Anytime a modern Turtles product accepts and celebrates the 87 Turtles, the product is usually more successful for it. Usually. So the third and final biggest problem with TMNT, I feel, is it doesn't know who it is for and what exactly it hopes to accomplish. As I already stated, it really isn't made for older fans, and it isn't a very welcome intro to new fans. We're expected to know who April is and how she knows the Turtles, we're expected to know who Casey Jones is and how he knows April and the Turtles, and that he and Raph have a history, we're expected to know about Raph and Leo's rivalry, and we're even expected to know about things that weren't in previous movies like who Karai is and how she knows the Turtles. For a fresh viewer with no prior knowledge of Ninja Turtles, this movie would feel like a mess. It's not even entirely clear that it's meant to take place in the continuity of the first three films, though with the trophy wall in the turtle lair and many other references, it strongly makes it seem so. Though considering the next mutation was originally somehow supposed to be in the movie continuity, it seems anything goes. So like in my Turtles 3 review, we've reached a point where I've just been dumping on this movie for a while, so I guess it's time for me to state what I do like about it. For the time, being a studio other than a bigwig like DreamWorks or Pixar, the CG animation is quite good. Some of the models move remarkably well, and the colorization and textures are decent. It's obviously dated looking, but not too bad. When the movie first came out, I despised the designs of the Turtles, but in retrospect, they're really not that bad. I don't know if that's simply because we've had much, much worse turtle designs since then, but I think they're pretty decent, especially Raph and Leo. The only one I find a tad repulsive is Mike. I don't know what it is, but something about the way they designed him just looks weird. His round, beady eyes that are ultra far apart and his creepy, wide, toothy mouth is slightly unsettling. For some reason, anytime the Turtles are redesigned for movies, Mikey seems to always look the worst. I felt he was the ugliest of the Ogre Turtles in the Bay movies, and even in the concept artwork for this new Seth Rogen thing coming up, he has a weird wide face again with spread out eyes like in this movie, and he looks like a Hey Arnold character or Ickis from Ariel Monsters or something. But that upcoming movie is a topic for another video. But back to the 2007 film, most character designs in this movie are okay. Most aren't great, but Splinter's not bad, Casey's decent, and Karai's hot as fuck. <laughs> Definitely my favorite Karai design to date, as she's often a character whose design I find to be plain and uninspired. April's design, though, is kind of off, and the immortal businessman guy looks pretty weird. As far as characters go, I think the true star of this film is Raphael. This is Raph and Leo's movie, and Raph is handled the best by far. The fight between Raph and Leo is the highlight for sure, and is genuinely kind of heartbreaking to watch. Leo's a bit of an ass in it, as we get to see how arrogant he looks mocking his foe before he realizes it's Raph, and he scolds Raph for being a vigilante, even though all the turtles are vigilantes. One of their best human friends, Casey Jones, is a vigilante. Leo was just being a vigilante in Central America for forever. It doesn't really make any sense where his logic is coming from, 
telling Raph he's a bad guy for being a vigilante. Again, their rivalry isn't introduced quite as nicely as it could be, but it is handled pretty well. Raph's friendship with Casey is handled pretty good too, and the idea of Casey sneaking out with Raph while trying not to get caught by April so they can go fight crime together is ridiculously fun, if I'm gonna be honest. Casey can get a tad annoying with what a comic relief man baby he is, but he's genuinely pretty likable and believable as what a guy who's been going out at night and fighting people with sports equipment for that many years would likely be like. The action as a whole is pretty darn good. Fight scenes are action-packed and fluent, and even the intro of the shadowy turtles running and flipping along rooftops can get you pumped. There are moments of questionable-looking action, but most of it holds up. Probably my least favorite action sequence is the Jersey Devil fight with Raph in the diner set to Big Black Betty. Felt like a desperate attempt at making the funny scene that everybody loves. I think they envisioned the Jersey Devil being the super marketable, lovable thing from this movie, but that clearly didn't work. The strangest thing about this movie is that while at the time of its release, as I was just getting back into my turtle nostalgia, I hated it and felt like it was so far removed from the turtles I knew and loved. It's now so synonymous with that era of the mid to late 2000s, though, when the start of 80s nostalgia was blowing up for my generation and things like Angry Video Game Nerd were bringing us back to the past, I now have a slight nostalgia towards this film. I often think back on how cool that time was when 80s kids franchises were the hip retro thing and my generation was the hip young adult generation and not yet the old news we are now. I many times wish the friends I was hanging out with back then were better and more openly celebrating such things, taking advantage of that nostalgic time. So this movie, in a small way, is nostalgic for a time of nostalgia. But in general, I still find TMNT 2007 to be a lackluster mess and a mixed bag with more cons than pros. It's definitely not the worst TMNT movie, but it's not too good either. It's most interesting just as an oddity in the Turtles library, and an interesting side road once explored but never taken. Do all the liking and subscribing and the sharing and the bell stuff.